mid-range and games. So mid-range is whenever something spikes very hard in the middle and then falls off later. But the advantage that it runs is that you get a much earlier spike. So whenever something's weaker than you early, then you could take what they want and then use it to then further the advantage, something like that. So basically like the power graph would look like this. You're going up and then you're really strong in the middle. Then you kind of plateau. It's not that it goes downwards, but compared to a normal sequence of things, you probably have a curve that looks more like this, where once it's just barely past that point, then a regular scaling sort of style would win. But if you can capitalize on that hump right here, then you have something. The first time I was introduced to mid-range was actually in a game uh, called Fire Emblem for GameCube. And in that game, right off the bat, you get this character called Titania. And Titania is an upgraded class. So in Fire Emblem, you have like, let's say a knight, and then the knight upgrades to a paladin. And the paladin is much stronger. She starts off as a paladin. So you have this upgraded class that deals more damage. And the character was intended to get you through the hard levels of the game. It was a game that was basically right before the internet too where like you couldn't really have guides and whatnot. So they'd have stuff like that built into the game. But what was interesting is if you continue to use this character, um, as you progressed, she would fall off. She would fall off on that hump once again. And then the other characters would be so much better than her. Like your main character, once you get past a certain point, you upgrade them to the tier two class from the nine to the paladin. Then you're in business because the other paladins would be so much stronger. And I thought that was super interesting as a concept. And then fast forward, as I'm playing these competitive games such as League of Legends, that same concept is true in different frameworks. In League, unfortunately, a lot of the mid-range characters are balanced as early game champions. Because, well, why is that? I guess League is designed to really value the late game carries carries being the mid laner, the ADC. So these mid range champions are usually aggressive mid laners, junglers, top laners, things like that. So they're designed to contend early. They don't necessarily stomp early, but they have in league. It's very lame. So, Oh my God. So it'd be a champion like Briar where Briar slash Warwick, um, these champions don't have overt power in the early game because you can't have that in League of Legends without it being overpowered because you would take everything. What they have is like can't die. <laughs> it's so lame. If the other player is worse or has to fight you, then you almost win by default to a high degree. So since that's the case, then they are stronger in the early and mid game. And then the way they abuse that in the mid game is that they force fights, can't die, don't die, win fight because didn't die and team win and then they take more and then team carries them so in league the mid-range is kind of if the enemy is worse then you win whereas in card games i feel like it's way more interesting but i haven't played many card games but the one i have played is hearthstone and the mid-range in that is a whole lot more interesting to me because it seems like this precise curve that you can run to try to win right then and there and i don't know if it's so much of a skill cap or a luck gap in hearthstone because i haven't got that deep into it but at the very least i feel like it's less of you suck enemy you lose but maybe i'm wrong another example would be in final fantasy in final fantasy um there's the red and black mages fantasy the red, well, there's the white and black mages, and then there's the red mage. The red mage is the mid-range. They can cast both white and black spells, but then the further you go into the game, they can't cast both. So there's a convenience aspect that is so, not swiftly, but eventually overtaken by dedicating to one or the other. What about it a little more, and then... In League, at least, this is the dynamic with mid-range, is that once the mid-range character gets a lead, then they can beat the enemy down with it. So the can't-die aspect, and then having more base stats, and then more effective items in the early game, 
you use that to smash into the enemy and then you beat him you, or you you hit him and you hit him and you hit him and then if you get anything going from that in league of legends it would be the turrets the objectives more farm stronger allies etc cetera, etc cetera, then you're winning and it's hard for the enemy to compete because they have to match certain things they have to defend this and if they're defending this they're not farming that therefore they're not scaling as fast and if they don't make the lines cross eventually then you perpetually keep winning so you beat them down rather than going even and then whoever has the better scaling champion wins by default so it is a more active sort of play style but the problem becomes where you get that advantage from and that advantage is usually going to come from the enemy's mistake and that's why the mid-range would fall off at the at the end game of a skill curve or perhaps in the game, the match itself. Well, I realize I'm kind of at the end of my thoughts here. So as a conclusion, mid range has everything in life as a proper bell curve. You have the complete noob and then the people in the middle, and then it goes right back to the expert. The beginning is as the end and the middle is usually bad. And I feel like that's where mid range is at in games so good when it's in the middle but then whenever you try to take it any further it becomes bad where's its use at well right there at the intermediate step and then you could use it to surpass the intermediate step and once you've surpassed the intermediate step you might as well discard it entirely at least that's my opinion and whenever you discard entirely you go right back to the beginning where you could be a complete starter at the game again and then Instead of taking this hump, you would then ride the proper curve to master the game. That's what I think. Alrighty. Bye-bye.